I am back at it again with a uh, unboxing video for the first time on my channel. Um, this has been out I think for a while but it was news to me because I didn't realise it was out. Um, but it's the Maya 56 Jelly Pot Gouache Pan um, and I once I saw it I was like I must get it. So I have been buying that and you will be witnessing me unbox it today. Um, later on in the video if you don't, can't be bothered to watch me cack-handedly try and take the foil lids of, off each and every single one of these little pots bless you can go to about 20 minutes in of the video and that's when i start doing the swatches and um, in the comparison towards the normal 24 hemi gouache pan that maya brought out and um, as you can see with this though if you carry on with the video and um, it does come with little handles on the lid and um, to me personally because it's supposed to be travel easy um, I personally wouldn't use them just because it is quite a heavy palette of paints um, and when you lift it up it won't come off but it feels like the caps could just ping off and then you're gonna have paint everywhere and my anxiety and fear would never allow it so if I was to travel with this I'd probably um, like actually put it in a separate bag but it's probably much easier just to take a Hemi gouache palette if you've got one of those because it's much easier to carry if you've got the 18 pan or the 24 pan um, Maya I believe is a Chinese company I believe um, and the little postcard type things that come up come up, come with the actual palette um, showing the shade ranges it gives you all the names and um, what number code they have I'm assuming you can get refills for some of these As I was unboxing these and unpackaging the little foil lids off each of the little jelly pots, I completely forgot the nightmare. They were um, nothing, obviously, no issue from the company at all. Um, it's just, I forgot how hard they were sometimes to get them out because obviously they're so nice and tightly packed that um, all the film lids are sometimes they're above each other, they're underneath each other. Um, so they can be quite hard and also it doesn't help that I've got like no nails whatsoever. So trying to get these bad boys out, bless, were a bit of a hassle. Um, but I got there in the end and I did get paint all over myself. Um, only thing obviously with it being foil lids and that, I feel like a lot of the paint was still on the lid so I did try to keep the foil lids to do the swatches with at the end but some of them I ended up dropping on each other so they ended up mixing colours and uh, so it was a bit of a hassle. Um, that but I did the ones that were still intact, I did scrape the paint off and put them into the pots. Um, just you won't see that in the video because I didn't want to bore you with it. I know you should probably always use um like some form of latex or like rubber glove um when doing anything with paints because technically all aren't good for your skin um even though they've got the ap symbol on um most of the time however i have recently just got a tattoo and i'm trying to keep my hands as clean as possible because i did have to clean after this video that i was filming um obviously i know uh, you kind of cover your tattoo but i was like as long as i can keep my hands clean and kind of keep that area out of touch um, so that's what that was for and also my hands are really dry so the less amount of times I can wash my hands during the day the better just because I can't be bothered for peeling skin on my hands not the vibe I will not lie
you can see there is the 56 shades all presented to you i am so happy with this palette and i'm so excited i am going to just quickly spray a bottle it down because i was going to do a painting later after this video i filmed this um i do feel like i tend to water water like as if it's a plant i do tend to spray a bottle um my hemi gosh palette pretty much every day just to keep it moisture moisturized oh my god i'm making it sound like it's a living thing um but just to keep like the moisture thing the each little jelly pot moistured um just because i had an issue with the hemi gosh palette drying but that was my fault because i forgot about it and the lid wasn't closed properly so that was entirely my fault um, but I'm so impressed with how many colours you get. All the shades are lovely. I will definitely be experimenting with all these. Um, just as a side comparison towards the normal 24 Hemi Gouache Pal um, pan. As you can see, obviously you get a lot more shades um, and the Hemi Gouache seems tiny. I used to always think the Hemi Gouache palette was so big, but it's tiny compared to this one. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do videos and fit in frame all the time with the 56 pan. As you can see, my Hemi Gouache palette has seen better days. It's very mixed and matched. I am terrible for mixing my colors. I just tend to dump my brush in anything when I'm trying to make a shade for a certain picture. Um, with the Hemi Gouache, I use it a lot, and by a lot, I mean I have probably refilled a lot of the jelly pots in there already, um, especially the white, the indigo, um, the purple, and a lot of the greens and teals I had to replace. Sorry if you hear any noise in the voiceover. Uh, my laptop is bloody ready to explode. It's that overheated, um, so it's just it's fan in the background. Um, now i'm just writing a quick title this is the book that i tend to do most of my swatches in um whether it's paints pencils inks anything like that it's just normal cartridge paper it is any isn't anything specific or special um for watercolors so later on in the video i will do all these swatches again um but on actual watercolor paper to obviously settle to settle the score um, to make it a bit more fair in that because obviously I don't feel like when you're swatching what colours of gouache or even acrylic sometimes on normal cartridge paper I don't feel like it's very fair being like oh it looks rubbish on this but it's like well it will do because cartridge paper doesn't really absorb any form of liquid and it just sits and it crinkles and it makes it look rubbish and um, so that's what I'm currently doing on this and um, but I like to just know the shades even though the my palette does come with the two little postcards with the shade names and all that I do like to just have one in a book and things like that and um, so this is just all I'm doing uh, it just takes me a while to do them because I'm no neat person and I'm very heavy-handed and just rush everything these were the few lids I did save the rest just got mixed up uh, I dropped them all uh, it was just an absolute mess and um, so I'm using those ones and unfortunately they're the only lids I saved um, my favourite colours in this palette is definitely the teals and the greens. The whole right hand section is probably my favourite part of the palette. I'm not the biggest fan of pinks, so to me I'm like, I could do without them. But in a way I couldn't because the pinks are very good for skies and skin tones. Um, so I do appreciate them nonetheless, even though they're not my favourite colours. <laughs> I'm extremely impressed with how pigmented um, the colours are. Like I said prior, I'm not a big fan of pink, but that neon pink, I was very shocked by. It genuinely is as bright as it looks in the video. Um, it's probably even a bit brighter in person. I was very um, shocked by that. So if you like pink, this is the palette for you. Um, no, I'm not saying it's all pinks, but the neon pink very stands out loads. The grey was very good as well. Um, I remember the only ones in the swatches that weren't the most pigmented and I had to do a few covers um, was the more ultramarine colour on the right hand side. I think it's the second from last um, jelly pot. That one personally was a little 
on the streaky side but I feel like ultramarine no matter what company you get from gouache acrylic oils they tend to be a little bit on more on the streaky side but that's just my personal preference and maybe I am completely using the paints wrong and maybe that's why I'm always getting streaky ultramarine but that's the only shade I really had an issue with um, as you can see some of the shades as well are quite pastel um, in light like some of the yellows um, and the Nepal's yellow type shades um, and also I think there's like a mint green and like some very light yellows and um, so it'd be a very good palette for people who like to stick in the cooler tones or the light shades <laughs>
also did the swatches like I said I would do um, earlier in the video. Uh, I used a Cotman professional watercolour paint brush just to show the difference. I did a few different brushes so you could see what they look like. Um, and I also did the, the swatches on watercolour paper. I can't for the life of me think of the watercolour book that I used these and got these pages out of. I want to say Bookford, but I don't generally think it's Bookford. Or maybe it is. Um, but it was cold pressed paper. I do remember that. Um, it's very good quality paper. Um, it was the A4, not A4, A5 size booklet. And I believe you got around 12 pages and I think it was around seven pounds something so it was quite expensive but it is very good quality watercolour paper and um, as you can see with the swatches on this it is much better you can see like the fade in it which most watercolours and gouache have that whole like pigment but also slightly transparent as it gets to the end of the swatch if that makes any sense um, and I just generally like the feel of them they seem like they're going to be very easy to blend um, very similar in comparison to the Hema gouache palette I'd say these ones are slightly more pigmented i had less streaky colors um in this palette than the Hemi gouache there's a few more i'd say when you're in comparison to the fact that this pan has 56 shades and there's only probably about three that's a little on the streaky side but i would expect them because they're quite uh they're not a fully pigmented type shade no matter what company you get them from so things like the ultramarine um they think the indigo was a little bit on the patchy side and i think one of the light pinks was a little streaky um but you tend to get that with those shades i think no matter whether it's acrylics gouache what colors anything like that um even oils sometimes um but i still love the feel of them and um, where in comparison to the hemi gouache palette i'd probably say there's about four or five that's a little bit can be a bit hard to get like full coverage with that but at the same time that could just be my fault because I'm so used to painting in acrylics. I expect full coverage from everything when watercolours and gouache are supposed to be more on the lighter side um, and supposed to give it just more of a light wash of colour rather than like full bold pigmentation.
however the strain in my arm at this point of the video was very heavy my arm was killing me at this point um because i was trying to not rest as you can tell my table is very dirty um i do clean it it's just it's stained with paint blah 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 if you're an artist you will know it is pr pretty much entirely impossible to keep any desk area clean um i cannot be the only one i refuse to believe and i don't want to be told i am the only one because then i will be sad um but i didn't want to rest obviously a fresh tattoo onto it so i had my arm pretty much in mid-air the entire video um and there was a bit of an ache going on i will not lie but we will fight through it as i want to show you these swatches um my favorite colors like i said prior as well are definitely the teals and the teals and the greens um but that's just general preference um this has nothing to do with any of the palettes they just t tend to be the colors i go for um however usually in paints i do tend to go for your more warmer tones so things like your browns and oranges um i have noticed that they are the ones i tend to use more even though i prefer cool tone colors which makes no sense but it's because i think i paint more darker scenes rather than light and airy scenes um so it's something i could probably do to broaden my horizons in painting world um, like I say in all my videos, I am no professional artist at all. Um, I literally just do this as a hobby and for fun and also to get better and hopefully maybe potentially be able to make some form of earning once I am a bit more experienced later down the line. However, we shall see. Um, for now, it is just hobby and I just like to do these videos for fun because um, I like painting. I do in the future want to make more videos as I, I only upload very rarely now. Um, I'm try, trying to accomplish doing a video a week, um, but it tends to be a video every two weeks to a month and that's because work sometimes gets the best of me and I get too drained. Um, but I do apologise, I will try and change that and change that way of thinking. <laughs> section of the swatches are probably some of my favorite colors that are coming up and um, i even love the yellows in this um they almost reminded me of like that like border of um grass to um sand part of the beach you know when you're walking down you'll be on the grass plains and then it goes into slow sand and then before you know it you meet the sea uh, and the beach is my favorite place anything with water rivers waterfalls anything i love it um I think they're probably the most calming places to be but I am a proper water baby so that could also be the reason
section with the more pastel blues and the ultramarines and the purples these were probably some of the shades that were the most um streaky in my opinion uh these would definitely probably need like if you were wanting full coverage on um like a certain aspect of a painting that you were doing i'd probably say you'd have to have a multiple covers of this and um, where you let it fully dry and then go over um but sometimes you get that issue of where you just end up lifting more paint off than putting on so sometimes it can be a downfall doing double layers um so it's probably better to use them for like just very simple washes for like beach scenes things like that nothing that's too heavy or pigmented um your reds and browns with very full coverage um i'm making it sound like it's makeup i know um i just i'm not very good at describing things so this is my best um, these are it's the same watercolor paper and um, still cold pressed and I'm just doing long streaks just so you can see the fade and how it gradually goes along the page if that makes any sense I didn't swatch all the shades doing this I just did like a few colors of it like each type of tone so like a few browns a few oranges a few reds a few blues a few greens things like that so like the lightest and darkest shades of each of those sections um, of the color wheel you could say um, and i think you could definitely do some lovely beach scenes the this whole page was giving me very beach vibes like very sand rocks that type of thing so i'll probably be doing that next with these um the pinks were kind of giving me very floral vibes so if people like doing what color type flowers this is probably the best shades for you um texture was really nice um none of them were dried out and um, they came in perfect condition I I'm very happy with this palette, I haven't really got any complaints when it comes to these. The colour range is astronomical, um, I probably will never run out of these. This will probably last me like at least over a year, um, especially because I've got the Hemi Gouache palette also to get through. Um, but these are the type of palettes that you would never really want to get rid of and you never want to use at all. Um, my only issue I'd have to say is the lid comes with this foam part on the inner section You could technically rip it out But then you've got like all the like glue that's keeping the um, polystyrene in place as you can see from what I'm showing in the video a lot of it did get on like when you shut the lid a lot of paint gets on it And I feel like it's just a little wasteful, but I'm assuming that won't happen obviously the more you use it and it lowers it's just because obviously the pots are very full which I'm not complaining about you get your money's worth is what I'm saying um just that is one little issue I'd say with that but obviously I know that's there probably because with it being a travel style um palette it's probably to ensure that the paints don't actually move and you don't spill them everywhere um but I would just say the foam thing was a little bit of an inconvenience but that's just because I don't want paint getting wasted <laughs> is it guys that is all my swatches from start to finish in the on the normal cartridge paper and also on the watercolor paper i'm finally looking at my laptop and i can see the video that part that you can see and it is buckingford watercolor paper cold pressed by details um i just couldn't think of the name but i was close and that was about seven pounds and 48 pence roughly i think um, these are all the swatches some are obviously more opaque than others um, but I love the palette and have no issues with it at all and I cannot wait to start painting with it um, if you have any ideas of things you'd like to see in the future video wise give me a comment down below I am always free to read through them and also give me a thumbs up if you th like this in video and a subscribe and I will see you in the next one bye bye